you doing? So let me start by, first of all, by saying I'm not a Ghana expert, but I, I certainly will share um, some of my experiences having visited there a few times. Um, and I certainly hope that I'll excite some of you to think about studying abroad um, because of what it can do for your own um, life journey. Uh, the, Dr. Oazier mentioned my recent trip with the CSU International Program to Ghana and one of the presenters in the session actually studied abroad in Ghana 27 years ago and so she was able to not only link with people that she had gone to school with but to relive in the same university, in the same dorms um, some of the experiences that she had as a young student doing study abroad. It, it really can do um, miraculous things for your life when you think about studying abroad and particularly I'll be talking about Ghana today and so in addition to encouraging our students to think about studying abroad um, I certainly want you to think about studying in Africa and specifically in Ghana and I'm just going to say right at the outset there is a lot of support for CSU students to study abroad um, it, one, it is one of the hidden secrets that a lot of students aren't aware of. So with that said, let me kind of give a, a little outline as to what I intend to cover um, during this brief time, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. Um, we'll do a little intro to Ghana, and we'll talk about some of the background information, including population, people, language, um, we'll certainly talk about diasporans that have lived in Ghana then and now. Um, we'll talk a little about the CSU IP program. Uh, we'll look at Ghana's, um, there is a brief video that I'll share with you where it's a promotional video for the University of Ghana showing some of the experiences that students have had who have studied at their university there in Ghana. Um, I will share some of my personal experience. Um, Dr. Wazir mentioned the orphanage that I've been working with, so I will share some, some of my experiences with that orphanage. Um, and we'll close out before we have the Q&A with a brief video that was shot when I visited there the last time in June of this year. So with that said, um, let me first of all introduce you to um, a couple words that is there anybody in here from Ghana let me ask that question nobody in here from Ghana okay well when you leave here today you can claim some Ghana heritage because you'll at least know how to do some greetings um, in oh that was outside I thought it was somebody in here because it sounded almost like what I was about to say um, the the, the Ghanaian in, in one of the several languages that is spoken, they say etisem and you would re react to me eya. So I say etisem, you say eya. Etisem? Eya. Etisem? Eya. Okay, what did you just say? Hello. Have no idea. No. You say I'm fine. <laughs> so I ask you, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. So let's try that again. Etisen? Yeah. Etisen? Yeah. Oh, and I, like, I saw, I'm seeing like more than 50 people in here, and I'm like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. So let me put this up so you can actually read it then. Etisen? Yeah. Etisen? Yeah. Etisen? Yeah. Ah, okay, you're a guy, Ghanaian. Bona fides are on the line. And, the, the other word that I'll share with you is, um, and there are different spellings for this word, the word aquaba, and that means welcome. So that's what I'm saying to you here. So here is a, a variation of that spelling right here. Um, so you know, welcome, you know, how are you, and you know, I'm fine. You're ready for Ghana. Trust me on that. 
You ready for Ghana? So the question you might ask is, why would I go to Ghana? You know, what's in Ghana to, to see and to experience? Um, has anybody in here ever like studied anything besides the faculty member that has traveled to Africa and earned it? A anybody in here ever heard anything about Ghana, had any discussion with anybody? Yes. You said they a guy from Ghana? Yeah. What happened to him? <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> okay, so you had some connection there, right? A anybody else ever had any conversation with anybody about Ghana? Yes? Mine's the same. I dated one, but I have friends still. Okay. Still talk. Special <laughs> friends in <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> They're very kind, very friendly, very loving. When I was sick, they would stay up and watch over me. Mm -hmm. Very kind people. All right. Anybody else? I saw him over here. Experience talking about. Why are you looking so serious? You just told me that's fine. Anybody else had any? Yes. Uh, what's up, my close friends? Speak. No, everybody can hear you. Close friends. Close friends? Okay, how close? You hang out to them. You hang out with those friends. Okay, all right. So, Ghana is in West Africa. Um, in terms of the name Ghana, let me get this up here. Um, it means warrior king, and it harked back to the day of the Ghana Empire between the 9th and the 13th century. So, whenever you hear the name Ghana, um, and like the Ghanaian people are a proud people, a very proud people. And so, if you go for how many people have heard of the Ashanti people? The Ashanti people, yes. When you go to the in the Ashanti region and you hear some of the folklore about the Ashanti people, you really start to get the picture of a very proud people and you know a lot of times when we hear about Africa, we hear about Ghana, one of the expressions we hear is the dark continent. Well one of the things I want to tell you is that Ghana is a very modern country. Very modern country. You know when I'm in Ghana I have all the amenities, the fineries, <coughs> the comfort that I'd have back in the West, if I want it. There are hotels right on the beach that is equal to any that you'd experience anywhere in the world. So I'm just saying, Ghana is a very modern country. So those of you that might contemplate visiting or going to Ghana, just remember it, it has internet, you'll be able to stay in touch with your friends. It has regular transportation, and you said the people are nice? Yeah. yeah, it has very nice people. So it's a very modern society, very modern society, and do not uh, sort of buy into this idea of the dark continent and then ask questions like, do you have electricity? Yes, they have electricity. According to the World Bank in, in 2016, um, Ghana has a population of about 28 million people. And that is according to World Bank figures in 2016, about 28 million people. And one of the things, as, as I was looking up some information on, on Ghana, um, I realized that Ghana is a very young country, very young country. That means, you know, we like to say the future lies with the youth. Ghana has a great future because it is a very young country, and I'll, I'll get to that idea in a minute. But just in terms of its geography, it is located in the Gulf of Guinea, only a few degrees north of the equator. That means they have very um, tropical type 
climate condition. Um, it can be humid. And let's see, now is October and we're getting ready to get cold. They're getting ready to get warm, right? Yes. Um, so they're almost on the opposite side of the, the, the equator that countries in the West and close to us would be. Um, the area spans about 238,535 square kilometers, which is about 92,000 miles, square miles. And it has the Atlantic coastline that stretches about 350 miles. So um, that's another beautiful thing about Ghana that is a hidden secret. It has a beautiful coastline. Sometimes people never think about beach and Ghana, but one of the places to go and have a good time at the beach is in Ghana. Um, Ghana has both a dry and a rainy season. Certainly doesn't have um, winter season like we do here with snow and that kind of stuff. They have a dry and a rainy season. Um, so I mentioned that Ghana is a very young country and this information might really surprise you that the, the, the median age for Ghanaians is 20.4 years. Median age, 20.48, I mean years. And if you look at the, the projection for going out to 2050, it will only get up to 27. A very young country with an exciting future ahead of it. You know, not like old people like us getting ready to check out, but a lot of young people ready to check in. I mean, it is the place, to, it is the place of the future. And I should say one of the places, you know, not the only one. So the next question you might certainly want to ask is, who are the people, are you blocking me out? Oh, so open up. Yeah, who are the people that makes up the country of Ghana. Um, and you know, I went to our favorite friend, Wiki. You know, that guy, Wikipedia. Um, so we have about two million South Africans living in Ghana, and about 23,000 Canadians. Uh, we have about 40,000 people from the Netherlands. Um, Germany, almost 30,000. Spain, 12,000, and Israel, about 3,000. One of the things that you'll find in Ghana is that there are many languages that are spoken, and I've just listed a few here. Um, with the Ewe, is that what you say? Ewe is maybe the what? Or Twi might be more popular, it might be the most popular language that is spoken in Ghana. Um, Twi, but again, oh I should also say this, most Ghanaians that you'll encounter if you were to travel there speak English. Most Ghanaians that you might encounter do speak English. Um, but again, um, several languages that are spoken. One of the things that I want to mention, um, there are some people that I'm sure you have heard of um, from the diaspora that have made Ghana their home over the years. And so I want to mention um, particularly uh, Maya Angelou, who had moved to Africa, spent some time in Egypt, and then moved on to Ghana, where she lived. and. Um, her, she had a son who had a very serious accident. And this is where she was inspired to write some of the best poems that some of you are familiar with um, that, that she wrote then. During this time she lived in Ghana from 1962 to 1965, she worked at the University of Ghana as an administrator, um, was also very active in the expatriate community of people from abroad, especially Americans, who were domiciled there in Ghana. And she also was the editor, the feature editor for the African Review, and a freelance writer for the Guinean Times, 
and she also did broadcast for radio and worked and performed with the National Theatre there in Ghana. Um, during her stay, um, it was at the end of the life of W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, she met and they collaborated. Um, and so, so she also met uh, Malcolm X while she was in Ghana. They became lifelong friends. Um, and again, the influence of some of the work that Maya Angelou produced uh, was cradled right there in Accra, Ghana. Um, another famous diasporan who spent time in Ghana is W.E.V. Du Bois. He died and was buried in Ghana, and he's a national treasure. The, the, the W.E.B. Du Bois Center that um, promotes Pan-Africanism is housed there in Accra, Ghana. And you know, the, 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 the former president in Kuma, um, like had W.E.B. Du Bois give him a state funeral and like really just made him an icon in the society because um, a man of his repute, you know, one of the founding members of the NAACP that like chose to spend his final years in Ghana uh, and to um, like work to promote the idea of Pan-Africanism. Um, his wife too was also interned um, there in Ghana. And I think that the last of the diaspora that I'll mention um, is Rita Marley. How many people have heard of Bob Marley? Um, so Rita Marley is the wife of Bob Marley. She was also one of the ITs that did back into that group and she um, moved to Ghana about 2000, the year 2000, and had, had been very active in doing a lot of community-based work um, with, with um, local groups there in Ghana. Um, she is another icon, you know, when you visit Ghana, one of the places that people like to show you is Rita Marley lives over there. Uh, but not only has she lived there, but as, as we're showing here, um, she has been involved with just a number of activities with different groups, um, building um, institutions and providing a lot of support for local communities. So she's not there just living as a, as a celebrity, but has also um, adopted schools and um, just done a lot of meaningful work as a diaspora living in Ghana. I want to take a, a, a couple of minutes to talk about the W.E.B. Du Bois um, Pan-African Center um, because the how many people have heard of Marcus Garvey? Um, Marcus Garvey is another preeminent Pan-Africanist um, and the ideas of Pan-Africanism is still alive and well in, in Ghana and especially at the, the Du Bois Center. And so I just wanted to share a few um, thoughts about what Pan-Africanism is all about as it is being promoted from the Du Bois Center there in Ghana. Um, some of the ideas that they, they talk about include encouraging and strengthening the bonds of solidarity between all people of African descent at home in Africa and abroad in the diaspora. Um, the idea is that Africa is, has a strong cultural identity, common heritage, values, and ethics, and that the development of Africa should be people-driven, and that they should rely on the African people for this development. In other words, all effort to develop 
um, Africa should be centered around the African people. Not that they are rejecting help from others, but if people are motivated locally to develop the infrastructure that they have, use the resources that they have, and to use the people that they have, then Africa will be a strong continent. Um, the, one of the tenets is that Africa can be strong, united, and have a global influence as a player and a partner. Um, all those ideas are germane, and you know, sometimes we hear people talk about Pan-Africanism, um, kind of almost suggesting that it's some kind of race-exclusive idea. It's not. It is about self-love and about promoting Africans to lift up other Africans. Um, one of the, I attended a, a lecture while I was in Ghana back in June. And one of the big ideas that was being promoted um, is the need to have propaganda. And you know, when we hear that term, we kind of get scared. But it is the need to have propaganda um, as an important part of promoting the ideas of Pan-Africanism. In other words, turning children on to the idea of self-love, of self-worth, of pride, and of dignity as a part of seeking to develop the country, I mean the continent of Africa. And they talk about encouraging all Africans to become part and parcel of the development of the continent, engaging and marketing women as teachers, doctors, ground nut sellers, students, workers, as a part of the development effort and the conversation. And the idea here is to make women front and center with men as a part of the development so that like women are not seen as having any less role than the important role that they play and should play in the development of the continent. Also the need to promote Pan-Africanism at the micro, meso, and macro level to promote the idea of transforming the educational curriculum to center on development strategies to incorporate Pan-African education in our schools throughout the continent and to encourage students to see the development of the continent as a part of their responsibility and their quest. Um, again, you know, I'm, I'm talking about Pan-Africanism and what it seeks to promote, to start inculcating in children from the very early age and stage as part of their responsibility to be involved in the development and the upliftment of the continent. Here's a critical one that, um, I, that resonated with me, the idea that they should reduce the amount of imported food and that this should be done slowly. Uh, by creating opportunities for farmers to grow local food and to sell them locally. Uh, if there's one disappointment that I have um, on visiting the continent for the first time was to see that there is a greater effort to promote local food. Because a lot of good food are grown locally, but, but sort of promoting it and making people proud of encouraging eating local and then um, having different African countries um, sell food across borders without barriers. Um, th th that didn't see me. You saw a lot of European food. Um, you, you saw food even all the way from the West. And you might ask, well, what about some South African food in Ghana? You know, what, what you have that is South African? Maybe not as big. What about Nigeria? Maybe not as big as it could be. So part of the idea in, in promoting Pan-Africanism is that like we move things across borders without barriers and that we encourage different Africans to eat locally and sell Globally, that's the way to earn foreign exchange and stop wasting your 
limited foreign exchange to buy foreign goods that might not even be good for you in the first place. Um, to encourage the diaspora African to return home to be part of the development process. And I think some countries are doing that well, encouraging Africans in the diaspora to come home and to invest in infrastructure plans and planning for the country. Um, the heart of Pan-Africanism is in Ghana, and it resides at the Du Bois Center. So just thought I'd um, make that little um, departure to mention a little about Pan-Africanism, and then I want to get back to um, Ghana and some of the interesting things um, concerning Ghana. We have gone over this. So let me go right back to um, some of the interesting facts about Ghana. Ghana is the first country in West Africa to become independent. It became independent in March 6, 1957, the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to gain independence from colonial masters. Ghana was and is still ranked as the most peaceful country in Africa using the Global Peace Index marker, uh, the most peaceful country in West Africa. Or in, in Africa, it is listed. I, I learned this when I was in Ghana, maybe the second time, and I really was surprised by this information that Ghana has the world's largest man made lake in Lake Volta. The largest man made lake in Lake Volta. It is 250 miles long and covers. 3,283 square miles are about 3.6%, almost 4% of Ghana's area. That one man-made lake, the largest one in the world. Um, other facts about Ghana. Ghana has the largest market in West Africa. It is called Kijikia Market and it is located in Kumasi, um, in the Ashanti region. I've been to that market, and how many people have been to Grand Central Station in Amsterdam, or in New York? Okay, so you know how you have a wave, and it's even if everybody, that's how I felt at the market in Kumasi. It just seems as if there are people everywhere, moving in every direction, all the time. But let me just tell you, when you go to Ghana, you're gonna go to Kumasi, you're gonna go to the market, you're gonna get some good deals. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, it is just like an unbelievable place for everything under the sun.